Hi, my name is Sarah Herring. And my name is Gabby Brocker, and we are both students working with the Cal Poly Strawberry Center. Today, we'll be going over the structure and anatomy of strawberries and the strawberry plants. Gabby will be covering the leaves, I will be covering the actual strawberries and the flowers, and then we'll wrap up with Gabby in the root system and the crown. We'll be giving both the common names and the botanical names for all the plant parts. There's something here for everyone. So whether you're a beginner or experienced, there's always something to learn about strawberry anatomy. Strawberry leaves are trifoliate. That means that there are three leaflets per leaf. So one leaf has three leaflets. Leaves have a serrated or sawtooth edge. Leaves are connected to the plant by the petiole or the stem. At the base of the petiole is the stipule. It looks a little bit like a leaf. Another stem connects flowers and fruit to the plant. That stem is called the peduncle. It's called a pedicel if it terminates with a flower or fruit. A single peduncle can have up to four pedicels and fruit. The first fruit or primary fruit is the largest. The second fruit is the secondary fruit and is smaller and so on until the fourth or quaternary fruit. The strawberry flower is super interesting. This is what we eventually become the delicious red fruit that we love to eat. Where the pedicel ends, we have the calyx. The common name for the calyx is the cap. This green leafy structure is composed of many sepals. Together, all the sepals make up the calyx or cap. These white structures are the petals. The common name and botanical term are the same petals. Each flower has five or six petals arranged in a circle around this yellow thing in the middle called the receptacle. The receptacle is what we eventually become what we commonly call the fruit. Fruit isn't the correct botanical term, but let's not get inside track to on that right now. Another structure arranged in the circle around this receptacle are the stamens. Each stamen is comprised of the filament, or the stalk, and the anther, which bears the pollen. The anther and filament make up the stamen, and the stamen is the male part of the flower. Like the stamen, the pistil is compromised of individual parts, the stigma, the style, and the ovary. The stigma is the tip of the pistil, and this is where the pollen from the anther needs to land. Once the pollen lands on the sticky surface of the stigma, it will germinate and a pollen tube will grow down the style and fertilize the ovary at the bottom of the pistil. That fertilization leads to development into the seed, which are the surface of the strawberry fruit. There are around 200 seeds on every strawberry. The correct term for this type of seed is an akene. An akene is a seed with the hard outer shell. Many other plants produce akenes. A prominent example is the sunflower. What we call sunflower seeds are technically akenes because the seed is inside a hard outer shell. The part of the fruit that we eat is called the mesocarp or flesh. What we commonly call fruit is actually an aggregate accessory fruit because it is derived from the receptacle and not the ovaries. Each akene is connected to a vascular bundle, which depending on the variety, are often seen extending through the mesocarp from the achene to the center of the fruit. Strawberries propagate themselves or spread via achenes or vegetatively via stolons or runners. Stolons or runners are long stems with one or more nodes. Nodes are where the plant will put down roots and form a daughter plant. After the mother plant puts out several daughter plants, you end up with a strawberry patch. A strawberry patch is what we find in natural habitats or in your garden if you let the plants spread this way. Commercial strawberry growers will trim runners to prevent plants from putting precious resources into this form of growth. That is vegetative propagation. For a fruit grower, it's better for the plant to use its resources to prove fruit, not daughter plants. 
so fruit growers will remove runners. As a matter of fact, vegetative propagation is how strawberry plants are started for commercial farmers and for gardening. Yes, you can produce plants using the achenes or seeds, but its hard outer shell makes it trickier and it takes way longer. Strawberry nurseries are where strawberry plants are produced. In these nurseries, they want to promote the production of daughter plants. Plant production fields in nurseries look like strawberry lawns, whereas fruit production fields look like thousands of individual plants on beds. Nurseries produce daughter plants that will be used as transplants for fruit production fields. These transplants were dug and the soil shaken off the roots. These plants are put into boxes of 1,000 plants per box and put into cold storage until they are planted. The crown is located between the roots and the petioles or stems. Strawberry plants will add crowns as they grow larger over the course of the season. It's the addition of crowns that allows the plant to continually produce fruit. As soon as this transplant is put into the right environment, for example, moist soil and adequate sunlight, it will begin to produce more leaves from axillary buds. Axillary buds are located just above the crown and give rise to the leaves.